Ich könnte mir vorstellen, dass das halt auch für uns Europäer sehr wichtig ist, mal die Augen aufzutun und, und irgendwie ein Verständnis für, für andere Kulturen auch zu entwickeln. Also ich bin pensioniert. Ja. Ich war unter anderem auch Geografielehrer. Und grundsätzlich wollte ich eigentlich prüfen, ist eigentlich das, was ich erzählt habe, irgendwo der Realität entsprechend oder ganz weit daneben. Unter anderem bin ich eben nach Rotorua gekommen und dort ist die ganze Anlage wie zweigeteilt. Und ich habe das dann gefragt, wie, wie kommt das und so. Und das ist der eine Teil, der ist unter Verwaltung der Maori. Und die Regierung hält sich da raus und die Maori machen eigene Führungen. Meals, this is a good place to come. I have put my corn in here and, got, and done a tour and then forgotten about my corn and come back three hours later. Und auf der anderen Seite ist eine, ich, ich gehe mal davon aus, dass es eine staatliche Einrichtung ist. Weshalb kann man jetzt vom Dorf nicht drüber in, in, in die andere Führung quasi gehen oder in, in den anderen Teil gehen? Man hat irgendwie den Maori auch ihre Plätze zugeordnet. Aber eben, das ist auch so ein Zuordnen. Also hier äh, seid ihr und, und da ist euer Territorium und hier ist unser und, und, und so. Our people were seafarers, so we were navigators, we were sailors, and we had crisscrossed the Pacific, we'd sailed the globe, and there was a conscious decision made to, to migrate here to live in New Zealand full time. So coming into that time when white settlers started to come to the country, we had our own government, we had our own laws, we had our own system of living in tune and with the environment. They started to hunt our people down, those who resisted against um, a colonial government. We were made rebels and had prices put on their heads. The villages were burned down, and lots of our people were murdered. A lot of the resource in the country, the land and the wealth of the country has transferred from our people's hands into white settler family hands. Now that we're at this village, we're learning too. We're, we're visitors, although we're New Zealanders. I think this village is, is a really good example how the early Maoris used to live. Until the Europeans came along, and then they changed it a bit. They're a very humble culture. I love their singing. They're very beautiful singing. They're very spiritual people, the Maoris. It really comes from their inner heart. So they've got to really forgive and learn that what happened 200 years ago isn't, isn't what we're trying to do today. I think we looked after the Maoris very well. Certainly there have been things done here 200 years ago or more um, where property was taken by the Europeans that came here. That was what happened there but unfortunately in this modern age they keep bringing it up. This morning folks we are going to depict the wing patterns of our smaller birds. Do we look to outsiders as the authority on our communities? And what happens to our voices when, when our stories are being continually told by outsiders? One of the biggest impacts of, 
of Western models of research is ownership and representation. You know, who owns who owns this corner or who owns these stories? The people do. They put it on camera, footage, evidence. I mean, we do it every day here, every night, at concert, expose our culture to the world. I am filming, yeah, running. Thank you. Oh, you can't learn our culture in one day or one hour. Mm. It takes a whole lifetime to learn our culture. I mean, not even our own Māori people could learn it all in a day. Kia ora. Kia ora. Kia ora. My name is Tina. I did my PhD quite a while ago. So, yes, I've been lecturing here for about mm, 10 years. And what I really like is the faculty, the fact that it's a Māori and Indigenous faculty, the fact that my classroom are Māori and Pacific students. For me, it's really about cultural safety and that the students feel that they're not just central to the teaching content, that they can see themselves reflected in the content that is taught and um, the scholarship that is taught, the writers, the artists that we look at, the filmmakers that we look at, the performers that we look at, that it's all their people, all Māori and Pacific people, Indigenous people of this region. My name is Tehini Grant and I'm a descendant of the Ngāti Hinerangi people. This is my land, my uh, tribal area that we're in now. I've been raised in the traditions of my people. Had a career as a, a filmmaker, a documentarian, writer and a director. So whether it's work in film or TV or just taking groups out uh, into the bush and, and reconnecting them with the traditional medicines, it's all about reconnecting, it's all about um, empowering. Playing, I just wanted to. <laughs> I'm the, the car panels on the side of the walls here within the Rotorua area within the no, didn't have ill intention. If they did, well then what their intentions were. So part of our ritual, part of our wako, being the mouth, the window, being the eye. When you're inside the house, you're inside the ancestor, you're inside our ancestor wahio. So your actions are a little bit more mindful, a little bit more gentle, a bit more respectful. Out here, however, this area out here, you can be as disrespectful as you want. <laughs> The way that you're going about your film is, is pretty much how they teach it in any communication studies school in a Western university. The standard Western approach to, to cutting a documentary film and it's to, you know, select people, gather people, interview them, have your question sheet, set up your camera, film, and then you go and edit it. We're still using the same models, the same 
practices, the same research ethics, the same understanding that the world is an open book and you can just walk into a community and take anything you want and run away with it. Whereas with our people, there's the idea of cultural accountability, that when you walk into your community, you just can't walk away and declare yourself an authority. You have to acknowledge your community because at the end of the day, you can't divorce them. You know, you can't run away and pretend that you're not of this community. And they can always hold you to account because sooner or later, you're going to have to front up to the community, you know, whether it's at a tangihanga, a funeral, a celebration, some community event, you still have to front up to your own people and they'll be asking you those questions. Hey, whatever happened to that piece of research that you were doing about us? You know, we never got a copy of that research. When are we going to be included as not just the end users, but as the people to whom these stories belong to? I don't think you can ever tell anyone's story that you haven't experienced their world view and walked in their shoes. We always include all peoples that are welcomed onto our marae, just to know that they're coming into a place where Māori custom and Māori traditions and Māori protocols are in action. Our rituals um, aren't the same as uh, Pākehā ways of behaving, so uh, for them to be aware that things might happen that they're not accustomed to. Reorganise the lens as a Western, you know, you know, Western filmmaker looking at an Indigenous topic. How do I reorganise my lens? So it's, you know, I'm looking at it from two perspectives. I could try to tell the story of a a German film student coming to New Zealand and trying to tell a Māori story, but I don't know how to tell that story in a way that rings true to somebody that's lived that. It's not my story to tell. It belongs to someone else. So what do you think needs to be done to empower you people, Māori people, or you as an individual to to tell your story, what, what would it be? It's for Pākehā to understand that they can't always be in control, that the control and the power of a story doesn't belong with them, it belongs to the people who own that story. And for them, their role in that is to support the owner of that story, to help them resource the story and to help them fund the story, but not to own the story. It's not theirs to own. You could just cut straight out after you looked shocked and bewildered. Yeah, I don't know if I like my answer and I, I also don't know how it, how it sounds, this sound, with the microphone being turned away from you. Yeah. It's just what I thought of in the middle of it. Of it.